Bramwell, West Virginia, a town full of turn-of-the-century Victorian mansions, a town built by the wealth of coal extracted from the mountains of Appalachia surrounding it. This has been a highly requested location, so I set out down Route 52 passing Pinnacle Rock, the gateway to the coal fields, to explore the place once known as the town of millionaires. The historic downtown is located in the horseshoe bend of the Bluestone River. Bramwell was once the home to many of the first mine owners and prospectors of the nearby Pocahontas coal field, which at one time employed over 100,000 coal miners, some of which lived right here in Bramwell and would either catch a train or walk to work. The coal boom here was so great that by the late 1800s, the Norfolk and Western Railroad scheduled some 14 train stops a day right here in Bramwell. Coal has played a major role in shaping not only the lives of generations of West Virginians, but the rise of industry in the United States from the production of steel to shipbuilding. But unfortunately, as you've seen in some of my other episodes, much of that history has been lost through neglect or just abandonment. Places like the Bramwell Interpretive Site, which is a reconstructed train depot, exist to preserve and relate the significance of those stories of the coal fields as part of the designated National Coal Heritage Area on the Coal Heritage Trail, which is made up of hundreds of square miles in southern West Virginia. Bramble may no longer be the home to millionaires, but it is the home of ATV tourists looking to have a good time on the Hatfield and McCoy trail system. One of a handful of eateries on Main Street in Bramwell, the Corner Shop Diner, a once pharmacy now turned soda fountain experience, boasts the best milkshakes in West Virginia and seems to really draw a crowd. Take a short stroll down Main Street and you'll see Victorian mansions on one side of the street and mostly authentic Mexican food on the other side. Okay, so here's the part I'm sure a lot of you were waiting for, the mansions. We can't forget the mansions. 
You thought I was holding out on you, didn't you? Let's see how the 1% lived nearly 150 years ago. At that time, Bramwell had the most millionaires per capita than anywhere in the United States. Depending on how you figure it, there were nearly 20 of them living here at one time. They lived a life of opulence, able to enjoy quite a comfortable and posh existence among their contemporaries of the day. In its heyday, the Bank of Bramwell was the focal point of all banks in southern West Virginia and points far beyond. I've heard one tale that the bank janitor used to haul bags of money by wheelbarrow down the street to the train depot. The town had everything they needed to support their lifestyle, from merchants to ministers to attorneys and doctors. They even had telephones. Some had indoor plumbing and showers. One even has an indoor pool. Bramwell also had an electric street light. This is the Goodwill House, once owned by the president of the Pocahontas Coal Company. The third floor has a ballroom, and some say the house is haunted. And here we have the Hewitt House B&B, built in 1914 by Catherine Hewitt, widow of Bramwell's first mayor, also the operator of Buckeye Coal and Coke Company. Finally, we come to the most expensive of all the mansions in Bramwell, the Thomas House. Built around 1910, this revival Tudor-style house was built by W.H. Thomas, the owner of several coal mines in the surrounding region. He employed Italian masons to do all the stonework on the house and extensive retaining wall. Heading back across the Bluestone River and just outside the historic district in Main Street, I want to show you one last thing here in Bramwell the old high school. The school was closed in 2004 after 108 years of operation. The last 13 years it only served as a grade school. Thanks so much for watching this episode, but if you'll excuse me, I got the need to hit some trail. We'll see you next time. <laughs>